the use case of a funnel is to pretty much i think it's more from the perspective of looking at a canvas and not having a million connection running one of each other you can you can say that the funnel will help you uh be more tidy on your um on on your canvas when you when you develop um so you can have you can have uh, uh connections combined into the same um into the same funnel I'll, I'll kind of show an example so let's let's say you have um let's, let's keep replicating this so yeah let's let me add another one because that's going to make sense all right so let's say you have uh what is it you have four processes that will feed into a downstream processor yeah so we have to connect them right so we got success now connect to this one success 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 right so this is how it looks imagine having hundreds of it or i mean ideally you don't want to have hundreds of it you have to keep your logic tight but let's say uh it's gonna be really hard to read because you see you have these boxes so what is the solution and what is the use case for the funnel here what you want to do you want to replicate the funnel and forward it to the funnel right so same principle instead of you having uh multiple connections here you add them to the funnel and benefits here are the following now i have a single connection from my funnel to the downstream processor and it's an individual queue the individual queue has its own threshold so i can manage this one here and say okay i have I can have 10,000 here as a back pressure. It's a concept that we're going to go over in the future, but bear with me. Or let's say I have a gigabyte of space for this connection. And here I will say, no, I don't want to have a gigabyte. I want to have less. I want to have one megabyte. MB, let's say. And 100 objects. Or, or let's say. And I want from this part, this processor, uh, I want it to be first in, first out as prioritized. And then apply. Boom now this has its own custom logic and your own custom threshold and i don't have to let's say send it directly to the target you know so that that's one of the the benefits you know uh, of a funnel but outside that is not a it's not a uh let's say it's not very complicated cool now let's jump into the next component here and this is where we have the templates templates um actually let's go outside this canvas and let's do this uh, let's say stop and we're going to demonstrate the use case of this component so templates is pretty much like you having pretty much the name says it i have a data flow or a pipeline and i want to be able to replicate let's say i consume from an s3 bucket and i put in another s3 bucket straightforward a lot of most of i think 80 percent of nowadays people do that they have different layers they move data from one bucket to another so you have a template you know regardless of the bucket name of the target or source you want to do the same thing but you know you don't want to click and drag all the time so you can create so what you want to do you want to template an existing one so let's say i have this job and i want it to be replicated obviously you can say copy and paste cool the other thing that created is uh, uh, equally as the other one minus the data so you can see we have eight components with this stage but i don't want to do that because it's a lot of click and drag i want to be able to create a copy of this one so what you do you're going to click right and go here and say create template and i'm going to say my my template and we're gonna say create it gives us a feedback saying yep was created with success say okay now i want to be able to use that template to create a new process group for a different thing but the functionality will be the same so what you want to do you want to click on this one drag and then he's going to give you a list of your existing templates so what you want to do you want to click on it and add it now since we already have a pg on our on our um, canvas he's going to give you a name of copy pg but let's let's move it and say pg1 let's apply this one cool and save it and let's go again into the same action now if we do this you see the name because it's 
the process groups like input ports they have to have unique names uh, as long as they sit at the same level a good example is here so for example you see here i have now if i flow i'm in the main canvas i cannot have the same process group uh name uh, shared across multiple i can give an example so if i do i'll copy this and i'll jump inside the process group and i'll paste it there you go he didn't bitch about me having a process group with the same name but since we're at a different level he knows that there's a hierarchy there so this must be something else obviously again the ui the the identifier is different as well so if we if we click in it um you you, you you're gonna see that the 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 we're gonna get into the group id as well you know you have multiple ids and you can see once we click on them you see something changes in the url so it pretty much tells okay you're in this process id and now i'm gonna jump in this other component if we go to the root folder you say there's no there's no root id here there is actually a root id but we're not gonna see it here it's just so if you click if you, when this action happens you see it's really fast you, you're gonna see it there in the ui he makes a request against the root id so that's the concept of the template now let's go to the final component on this on, on this uh component bar these are the labels uh they're useful they're useful but they're not i don't know sometimes it's good you have a production canvas but normally in production i do not touch the flow they getting populated via code deploy and i really don't care where they line up in their color i know they're working and are they running i monitor the status from external so i don't mess with that staging and development is good to make this uh, separation using the labels so label is pretty much like an indicator for, for human better human readable thing so let's say for example let me actually the way you use it same thing click drag push it in let's say this i have a very complicated process so and like you don't want people to go over these boxes and say oh generate flow obviously you have to give them specific names you can't leave them like this with the default name otherwise people have to jump in it look at the comments and read through the properties it's a nightmare so that's bad development when we're talking about knife but let's say i'm gonna use the notes as a as an indicator for my peers to understand what i'm doing so I'm gonna add the label here so i'm gonna say the first label um my process group this description so that's pretty much it you can see it's it's a it's a block of notes that you can add okay this is my description and that's the basic note now what i want to do let's copy and paste this one right. now i, I, I want to go and say critical components and i want to make this one big you can see it gives us an option to add bigger and i would say okay this is a critical component guys so if any failure here i don't know raise the alarm and in the same time what i want to do i want to also change the color of this one to make it more representative so i'm going to make this red you can also have you also have this up right so what, what you can do you can pretty much use the notes to 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 represent the descriptive information for your peers or for yourself and say hey we can't have errors here but this is when you only when you look at it through a human eye if you want to monitor this to a the more automated uh, form uh, this is i'm not going to say garbage it's not really useful so i don't I like i just use this in dev and staging this in production doesn't go by the way uh, and if it goes, it doesn't mean nothing for me because I'm not, I rarely open production canvas. Uh, all right. So that's the first part of talking about the main UI canvas. Now, moving to the, to the, to the main, to this last part of this one, we can see we have the login and log out button. So this one, when you log out, it will pretty much take you home. And, uh, if you want to log back in. Uh, oh, all right. Um, and all right, let's update again. Cool. Good day, buddy. No. Right. So now we have this. Um, all right, we finished talking about the main components. 
the processor, we have the input output port, processing group. We didn't touch on site uh, site to site connection. Uh, we're gonna see that in our remote process groups. Uh, we're gonna see that in future tutorial. We touched about process groups. We touched about what's the funnels and how we can use it. Template importing, template creating, template, and the notes a bit unuseful. But uh, in the next one, we're gonna go over the burger menu. Uh, it has some important information there, and, and I think you should learn all about it.